Hello everybody, it's Jerry again with a review for the Furious FPV True D Diversity Module. Um, actually, I have to go pick up a camera quick as my other one's in the shop, so the video set up a little bit differently. I don't have all the lighting up, but bear with me. <laughs> um, so as far as what you get in the box, firstly, you get obviously the module itself, which is this one right here. Um, you can see it's a very nice um, clear plastic uh, casing. And then the only major difference outside you can tell is the three buttons. Um, you will though notice, pull it out. Here's the module. So you'll notice uh, for up top it's got obviously the True DV3. You got Furious FPV at the bottom. The three uh, tactile switches. Right on the, they're very, very nice. They feel very nice. Um, on the back, you'll notice the modules are quite a bit more separated than the V2. So you get better cooling, uh, doesn't heat up as bad. And then another major thing right here, that USB plug right there. You used to, if you had to do any changes, you had to go through the FTDI and it was a pain in the butt to do. Now it's literally just pretty much plug in and go. Uh, you get that in the package. Let me go and move this to the side. You get that right there, the module. And then you do get a 45 degree SMA as well as a 90 degree SMA that do come in the box so whatever antennas you're going to be using patch or anything you can go ahead and use whichever let's go ahead and get these back in here there's the module right there all ready to go go ahead and power it up so you get first off that little logo and then your band and everything. I already have my call sign set. So, main thing with features. The big improvement between this over the V2, this one does allow you to use the, the actual buttons on the goggle to change them. Um, so if you did want to change like the channel or whatever, you can do that via the buttons now. Huge improvement from having to take your glasses or taking the goggles off and actually setting it. Um, it makes it a lot easier to go ahead and actually just adjust it. Um, when you have your channel set in working mode, you can literally just swap through the channel to do whatever you need to do without having to pop them off. So that's a big plus. Um, also, the RSSI resolution is a lot higher. So you get, uh, there's a better algorithm for actually switching between antennas. You can't even notice it. Um, it also has a lot more steps in the display too. So you can actually see a lot more clear um, what your RSSI level is for each individual antenna. Um, you do have a buzzer now, big improvement, which when I first set this up, it starts beeping, you start hearing it, um, with, I mean, every press you have your actual, uh, it tells you what antenna is the one receiving the higher signal, clear LEDs, which has two, um, over the casing as far as the other one had the smoky white, which you couldn't really tell. This one's very easy to see and it looks really nice too. Um, another thing, you can set low voltage uh, signal on a low RSSI signal, so you can set it to 20, 35, or 50%. Anything happens, starts getting low, it'll start beeping, letting you know, um, just to warn you. So, big plus two for beginners uh, getting into it, just so they can keep an eye on it without fear of like losing their craft or losing video. Um, like I said, the modules are separate, so allows for uh, a lot easier heat dissipation. You don't have buildup on, uh, uh, on the modules like there was on the V2. Um, the main thing that I loved, or I mean one of the things that stood out right away was this. I was asking for this since the V2 came out. The wheel that was on the V2, it's okay, but honestly it's a freaking annoyance compared to this. Now these you have these, these really nice tactile switches. Um, this thing is, I mean, they require pretty much no effort to press and they feel very nice. The USB on the back, like I said again, one of the major features, um, a lot of people add their own logos or they're constantly like modding little things. People like to hack in the firmware and do stuff. Um, but not having to mess with the FTDI adapter, it's a freaking huge win. Um, and then the firmware is, uh, I think, the major, major improvement uh, over the V2, which this one, I mean, the display, the way that the UI is set up and everything. So this, the modes, you actually have working mode, which that's all your channels that you've saved before. That's where they'll all be. So all your bands, everything, all your favorite channels will be in working mode. When you go into working mode, that'll allow you to actually just swap up and down um, between, like I said, your saved channels. Um, and your display, from top to bottom, you got A, B, E, F, and C bands. 
I mean, you can set your own frequencies too for some other uh, receivers that do support, the other transmitters that do support it. If you do choose to erase a channel for whatever reason, the other one didn't have that. So if you're in working mode and you're on whatever channel you don't want, you can hold the center, the center button and then I'll pop up that little menu. That little menu right there, and you can go ahead and hit delete and it'll get rid of it. The other one, you were stuck with any channel you programmed, you couldn't remove, which was a freaking pain because you had to go through pretty much everything just to adjust or to switch channels or um, anything else. And there was no way of resetting it besides resetting the firmware, which I'm gonna be doing that every single time that uh, you put the wrong channel in. The next mode uh, you'll have is manual mode. This one lets you search through every single channel, every single band. So that'll go through every channel with a single click and then it skips back up to A, you can go down to B. As you go through the channels, you'll notice it uh, populates for RSSI data and you can go through them. I have a 5.8 gigahertz tri-band uh, AC router, so it, it was weird. It was picking up a bunch of stuff when I was um, calibrating it. But right now I'm a little bit farther away and you'll see there, there are a couple, but no quads are on. And you'll see it does populate every single channel on every single band. If you hold a button, it'll skip to the next band instead of going through the channels. So you can, it'll, it'll shorten it down a lot better. Um, shorten down your time as far as operation. If we go into Smart Search, I love this feature. So here, if you hit Smart Search, you let it do its thing. It'll go ahead and go through every single band, every channel, <clears throat> whatever it is and find anything uh, see so I can't find channel I have no antennas I'm far away from the router and all that stuff so it's not going to be picking anything up um, let me go ahead and power up a quad so you guys can go ahead and see what it does give me one sec here I got my bull shark 180 I'm going to go ahead and power it up uh, off camera and then do a smart search again alright so immediately you can see right away it popped up E8, but let's do the smart search again. So we'll go ahead and go back up to smart search. Let it do its thing. You'll see now it's popping up all the little bands. And then the one that's blinking, that's the highest RSSI. So that's the recommended band. That still might be like two megahertz off of what the actual band is. But the thing that I like about this though, is that once you have that one that's flashing, that tells you that's the best band. You can go through every single band. It'll automatically uh, rotate through each one that shows up on there. And then whichever one's the one that pops up on your screen the best or that if you know matches your video transmitter, you can go ahead and hold it and it'll save it to your working mode. That's a huge plus to people doing racing um, that do scanning like over the V2. They do scanning and it wouldn't show you which one was the best. It just kind of showed um, these are the ones available. And then you'd be stuck with the channel if you got it wrong or if you guessed the incorrect one. You'd be stuck with that channel forever saved on your uh, on the module. This one, however, as mentioned, if for some reason you don't want that channel, you could always hold it. That one saved it. So if you go into... Um, manual mode or actually sorry about that working mode you don't want that channel hold down the send button and you go ahead and delete that and it's gone you can go to the next channel this module i mean i've, I've been flying it for the past three days compared to the v2 there's absolutely no freaking competition um this i recommend for anybody uh, honestly anybody getting into the hobby this is a great uh interface the system's very, very nice. It looks freaking sexy as hell. The buttons are easy to operate. Um, very easy, especially with the with the smart search feature. So anybody getting into the hobby, you have any buddies trying to get into it, anybody that's already in it and has the V2, definitely upgrade to the V3. Um, a lot of people, there's debate going on between the LaForge versus this one. And I personally haven't had the opportunity to try the LaForge. Um, I don't own it. Um, I've heard people, I mean, it's apples and oranges, people like that use Apple versus people that use Android. Um, there's preference in everybody. Um, me personally using this one, obviously I prefer this is the only thing I've flown. Um, I do have a buddy that has a LaForge, so I am going to be flying his hopefully next week. Um, and do a comparison as far as my thoughts between the V3, uh, the Trudy V3 from Furious FPV and the other one, um, the LaForge. But... 
that's the overlook my review of the true dv3 from furious fpv and thanks to steve for sending that over um there will be fly videos dvr um in the coming weeks uh so hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you guys for watching see you guys next time